When you suspect that your computer has been infected, or you knew your computer was infected and then you tried to remove them, how can you be absolutely certain beyond a shadow of a doubt that the system is now clean? Well, in this video, I'll show you exactly how the pros do it. Now, most people determine if their system is clean when they run a virus scan and it comes back with zero results. And some savvy users may run multiple scanners and then when all of them come back with zero infections detected, then they're willing to declare that the system is now clean. But computer science is still a science, therefore we need a consensus. Huge shout out to VIP CDK Deals for sponsoring this video. Do all of your friends call you a loser for using a sus copy of Windows? Then stop being a zero and get ready to be a hero by getting a valid copy of Windows 10. With all the bells and whistles a future superstar like you needs, you might be thinking to yourself, Eh, Pro Edition costs $200, see? No. If you follow the link in the description to VIPCDKDeals.com, you can get yourself a Windows 10 Professional Edition for $22.50. Wow! You think that's great? Well, if you use coupon code NK25, you get 30% off. That brings the price of Windows 10 Professional to $15. Wow! All major payment methods accepted, including PayPal, Visa, and MasterCard. Once you have your license key, open Settings, then System, About, then Change Product Key. Simply copy and paste your new key and then click Next, and then you are Gucci, my friend. VirusTotal is a free website and it's a system that lets you compare files, URLs, even things running on your system against approximately 76 of the world's major players in malware and virus detection. We're going to use this today. First, I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to go ahead and choose a file here. And this is something that a friend of mine sent me because he thought it was suspect for being infected and I verified it was. It's supposedly a, uh, an extension or a plugin for Adobe After Effects. And these things cost money, so people are sometimes um, tempted to download pirated versions of this or bootlegs. And sure enough, the patch in here, which is required, I submit it to VirusTotal. And boom, 45 security vendors have found that it's actually a variant of Zuzi, which this is a hack tool dropper um, Trojan horse, which literally steals accounts and is extremely persistent. This is very dangerous. This will totally hack you, take your accounts, steal all your logins, um, and really hijack your system. With it being a dropper, it'll also persist through many reinstalls and resets. So very devastating, all from just downloading that. And we found that out through submitting it to Virus Total. Now, you can use that tool. You can also submit URLs if someone sends you some sketchy link or practically any link that's coming from somebody I don't trust or I don't know why that link is being sent to me. I'll submit that sketchy link here and it'll compare it as well. Now, the tool we're going to use to check if your system is clean is called Auto Runs, and it's at the link in description. It's a 100% free tool made by Microsoft and is downloaded through Microsoft, and you can get it right here. Well, I already have it downloaded. The version we're going to use today is called 14.09. I have made videos on version 12.0 and 13.0 variants, um, but we're going to go ahead and use that one. Now, when you extract the Auto Runs folder, you'll have all of these options here. Now, since we're running a 64-bit system, if you're running a modern system, most likely you're on 64-bit. So you use auto runs 64.exe. We're not going to use these others. These are command line versions. The auto runs regular without the 64-bit is the 32-bit. You would use this on older systems, which most likely have only 4 gigs of RAM or less. Typically, those would be on Windows 7 or earlier. Um, so we're going to be using 64-bit. We're going to go ahead and right-click on it and then run it as administrator. This is going to be what you see, and I cannot see a whole lot running on the system right now. It's very small, so we actually need to change some of the options here. So once you get here, you're going to go ahead and go up to Options, then Scan Options, then you want to uncheck Scan Only Per User Locations, and you want to make sure that all these three are checked. Verify Code Signatures. We're going to verify if Microsoft knows who the heck everything here is. Um, we're going to check VirusTotal.com and we're going to submit unknown images. After you verified that those three are checked and the top one is unchecked, go ahead and click rescan. Now what it's doing right now is these are all the things that are installed in the system, everything that has a registry entry. And over here on this column, we can see zeros out of 73 and whatnot. This is the virus total column, and this is comparing all of these entries against virus total. Just like how we submitted that file and it came back with 43 vendors saying it's bad. Well, here we can go see if it's coming up under any detections. 
And on the, on the Publisher tab, we can also see if it's been verified. Verified means it's been registered with Microsoft and that's a valid publisher. Now that's not something to say if something's unverified uh, that is bad. For example, right here we have something in pink, which means it's not verified. It's PC panel software. It's by PC panel. That's my little USB mixer. And they just didn't put their little accompaniment software and driver and validate it with Microsoft. Since I know I have PC panel running and I did install that, I, I can ignore it. So being unverified isn't necessarily infection, but if you see something that should be verified like Chrome or Microsoft Windows Media Player and it's not, it's not verified, then that's something suspect. But the most important thing is, is we're going to look down here on the virus total column and we have a 1 out of 73 right here. And we'll go ahead and pull that up. And it's coming up as 1 detection under Secure Age Apex. Now, 1 out of 74, 1 detection is typically a false positive, but we want to take a look at it. I always tell people 1 out of 74, 1 out of 76, whatever, is not a detection, even 2. Usually 3 is probably okay, but check out what it is. This is Adobe. It's verified by Adobe. Adobe Acrobat startup utility is not a threat. Since I know it's okay, we can ignore that. You can go through all the things in your system. This is actually going through your registry. So instead of going through to regedit and getting yourself in trouble, um, doing it that way, going through all of this, this can get you in trouble going in and, and modifying keys. Um, you can actually control all the things that are running um, in the registry through here because if you need to disable something in the registry all you got to do is go here let's find one that has one that has 72 let's assume that this creative SXFI connect was 5 out of 72 or 45 out of 72 if I want to disable it I can just click right there I've unchecked it now if I go to this entry if you want to get technical we can jump to that entry and here this one here has been disconnected it's under run and this thing here is now just is now completely disabled because I've unchecked it. Now I can go ahead and check that back. But this is how you'll go through your system and be very sure that you're not infected. If you want to get really technical, if, if you were trying to go here, you can right click and you can actually uh, search it online. Um, you can jump to the image, which will take me to the file. So if you want to do manually delete something, but make sure you're, you're absolutely certain because like I said, one out of 74 is not a detection. Um, reason that these things can come up is certain scanners are super sensitive um, and they're trying to, they're using heuristics, which is a behavior based or reputation based. So they don't really know what it is. They're just alerting on things that do certain things, work folders, um, from Windows does is kind of an unprivate thing. It likes to communicate to other computers on the network without your permission because it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to be for sharing on the network and Secure Age Apex might think that that's acting like a, a back door. So like I said, I like to think if this thing has a lot of detections like we went earlier and we submitted a file. Let's go back. It's not that one. We go back here we'll submit that file again now this thing is obviously infected this is 45 out of 68 so this is obviously and it's not just saying malicious or unsafe it's saying exactly what it is it's a hack tool all these different things so we can we can be sure without a shadow of a doubt that that's definitely infected one out of 74 no also it's a microsoft thing this one says 174 work folders and I can go through here. All right, let's look. Adobe Updater, 1 out of 73. That's Adobe. That's okay. Uh, Asus Tech. This is by Asus. Um, that's my manufacturer of my motherboard, so it's okay. Now, there are color codes here. So if you see yellow, for example, that just means that this registry key um, belongs to a file that's no longer there. I don't believe in deleting registry keys because... Uh, I mean, the jury is still out. There's a debate about it. If you're asking me, don't delete registry keys. It's not going to hurt if it's still there. If it goes to nowhere, um, computers are so fast right now, they can read through a huge registry in nanosecond, 
you know, several thousands of times per second without making, uh, without even stopping. So I don't delete keys. So it just safely ignore stuff. Um, this here is from Rogue Killer. This is a virus scanner. I already uninstalled it. So this registry key is no longer valid. I'm just going to leave it alone. This right here is pink. Pink means not verified. This is 7-Zip, which I installed. It's my archiver. It lets me unzip things. Um, and I know it's not verified. I've known that for a while, so nothing to worry about. But like I said, over here on the right is what you want to look for. And if you go through here, and the worst thing you can see is 1 out of 74, 2 out of 74, then your system is 100% clean. Fantastic. If you start seeing threes and you see a three here and it's also pretending to be something else, I would definitely be concerned. If you do find a file that's got multiple, you know, dozens here, then your system's still infected. What I would do if you did find an infection is go ahead and uncheck it because this is part of Windows, so I can't uncheck that. But uh, we'll go up to here and uh, go ahead and, un and uncheck it right there. So what you've done here is you've... Um, you've added a, a zero to the value essentially. So it's disabled, it can't run, and then I would run some scanners to remove it. If you're really savvy, maybe go there and delete it manually, but typically I, I, I would want experts to go in for manual deletion or to be sure what you're doing. You've safely secured your system if you unchecked it here because it's dead in the registry. Um, and then I would run scanners to remove it because Oftentimes, if they're at the system level, if you try to remove them manually, you have to take ownership of them. You have to go into properties and take ownership of them. And that can cause Windows to think you're a threat and block you out and you'll lose access to things. Um, when you use a scanner, when it removes things, it's not you. It's not Nico in the user directory uh, trying to delete it, but it's rather Windows, the system, is deleting that file and removing that infection. So it's so much safer to use a scanner. If you need help removing malware, check out my channel. I have tons of malware removal videos, including some that have millions of views. So it can help you out there. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Did you have any detections? Tell me about it in the comment section. Hope you found this video helpful. If you like it, please click like and consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or even support me on Patreon. And I will see you next time.